Well, welcome everybody. My name is Felix uh, Nate. I'm with the campaigns team at the Wikimedia Foundation, and we're very excited to um, talk about the Organizer Lab Beta version with you. Um, so, as you may have read in the emails, the Organizer Lab is um, uh, an online course that the campaigns team why is hoping to run. Why is it to, important for that? What makes it meaningful? Okay, so um, the reason why we're here is basically just to talk about um, the organized, Organizer Lab and also to provide um, avenues for people to ask questions, provide more information about the project. Alex is going to give us a presentation on the, um, the much more details about it and then um, we'll come in later on and ask um, and give the floor to people to ask questions or um, I am, um, sorry, I'm trying to add people. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we'll give the I floor. Can do that, Felix. I can handle that, Felix. Okay, cool. So we'll give the floor at the end of the uh, presentation to people to ask for people to ask questions, chime in with suggestions or thoughts that you have about the project so far. So Alex, over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, just a reminder, we're going to be recording this so that if someone misses the session, uh, they can watch part of it. We will edit out the little bits at the beginning and the end uh, will not have the Q&A, but if you don't want to get caught in the recording uh, by chance with the, the video, uh, Zoom picks up various bits of stuff. Uh, and so just make sure you keep your video off um, if you are uh, don't want to get caught in that space. We will not uh, post the Q&A part, uh, we, but we will use that to inform other stuff. Uh, hi, so we are running, uh, at, oh, and I'm Alex Stinson. I'm a lead program strategist for the Wikimedia Foundation. I am focused on campaign organizing uh, for the last few years. And we've been doing uh, mentoring and coaching and uh, experimental campaign organizing through campaigns like One Love, One Ref and Wiki for Human Rights. Um, and in the process of doing this and then responding to movement strategy recommendations, we've realized there's a big gap uh, and skills that we are hoping to fill with the organizer lab this year. Um, and we're gonna be focusing uh, the GAP experiment on climate change and sustainability. And I'll explain why uh, a little bit later in the session. Uh, so first we're responding to two movement strategy recommendations and designing this course. First, invest in skills and leadership development. And second, identify topics for impact. Um, why are we going about the approach of training organizers to run campaigns? Because from a topics for impact perspective, uh, campaigns are really good at building movement capacity. We've noticed that campaign activities first help local organizers run their first events, get more involved in the international community, connect with topics that they haven't experimented with before. These events are also good at identifying content gaps and getting people active and actually filling them. Um, and these campaign activities are really good for uh, reactivating editors who've maybe encountered the movement in other contexts, uh, but haven't been built a habit of contributing. And so we're, we've noticed that campaigns are really good for this, but we have this like larger set of problems, which is we don't have as many organizers knowing how to design these campaigns. Um, so we're gonna be running a course uh, from about October 30th uh, to De December 15th. We're still finalizing the dates uh, in part because we want to hear from applicants when the best time to do live sessions will be. Um, and this course is going to have six units in five live sessions. And uh, it's going to be content presented in English, but we will be ready to support people who, who need live translation uh, for events. And we're also writing the course content in as international English as possible uh, to help uh, folks be able to use things like machine translation to double and triple check what they're learning and comprehending uh, in the language. The reason for this is an experimental course. This is the first time we run a training for campaign organizers. And so we're gonna be adapting it and changing it as we go. And it's easier to work in one language uh, and, and logistically um, for this. In future iterations of the course, we will likely have other languages. Um, and we really want one major thing 
uh, to be the kind of what we want the participants of the course to come away with one major thing. That is the ability to lead campaigns targeted at climate and sustainability and to provide and be able to create broader calls to action focused on topics related to um, uh, focused on topics related to uh, other topics for impact or knowledge gaps on the Wikimedia platforms. Um, we've, uh, sorry, they're getting a little bit of feedback from Christopher, trying to mute. Um, so, excellent. All right. Um, so we, we've noticed the world is noticing climate change and the climate crisis and the sustainability. This is a moment uh, that the Wikimedia movement and other movements need to be responding uh, to this larger crisis. And we've noticed that the Wikimedia movement's uh, kind of organizing capacity to work on that topic is not as mature as it is in other topic areas, such as the gender gap, glam, and education. And so part, partly we're focusing on this topic because now is the moment for it. But partially we're focusing on this topic because we've learned by working in the education space and in the glam space and observing the gender gap movement, that it's really important for organizers to cooperate on a shared topic or theme of focus. Um, and so we're, we're theming the course to make it easier to learn, uh, but we, we expect everyone to walk out of the course with skills to organize in other topics. Um, we're hoping to include organizers at all level of their organizing experience, but in particular, we're addressing this gap in movement capacity, where local event organizers have plenty of opportunities to run local edit-a-thons and events, and there's uh, many uh, many kind of opportunities to get mentored, or coached, or trained to do that. And very experienced organizers run global activities and campaigns on a very experienced uh, regular basis. But if you're partway through your organizing career and you're like, I wonder how they run these international campaigns, there's no space for that. Um, the, it's often kind of ad hoc. People volunteer, but then get thrown in to international campaign organizing without a lot of support. Um, and so we want to provide, alongside the informal learning space, a formal learning space. And so that's who we'd like to have in the course. And and uh, and we'd like to have your help finding folks uh, to fill it. I, I, I notice a lot of people in the room who are international organizers have done international work before. And we really need to find these medium experience organizers who are kind of the future of campaigns. They're the future of other kinds of activities. We, and kind of provide additional space for them. Um, if you're asking yourself, do I qualify? Or does someone I know qualify for the course? Uh, these are the four basic requirements uh, that we're gonna have for the course. First, have you run a Wikimedia activity before? Uh, this, any activity, could be an edit-a-thon, could be an education program. Um, do you want to learn more about the climate change and sustainability organizing space? Um, we, we're, we're going to kind of provide a, a overview of what we've learned about the space. Um, would you like to be part of running international campaigns or regional campaigns, or would you like to develop campaigns yourself? And can you participate with the course content in English? Um, the course content in English, like I said, it's we're writing the course content in English, but live sessions can be translated. So we're mostly wondering, can you engage with written documentation in English and, and learn and participate? Assignments can be turned in in whatever language you want to uh, turn them in that's appropriate for your organizing context. And we will provide live translation for the folks who, who need it most uh, in, the, in the course uh, when we do live sessions. Um, We've had about 75 people apply. Uh, and so some of you might be asking, like, do I still have a chance to get in? Uh, or, and yes, yes, you do. Uh, instead of just selecting folks with the most experience in the Wikimedia movement, um, we're actually trying to create a really diverse cohort. We want a mix of different levels of experience within the movement, people who are relatively new, have some medium experience and are more experienced. We wanted the participants to be representative of the whole kind of landscape of organizing in the Wikimedia movement, different regions, different languages in which they organize, different geographies. 
And we want the course to be gender balanced. To do this, we're gonna be kind of looking at who's in the cohort and, and trying to find the right balance uh, uh, within like who's available, who's applied and getting this diversity. Um, uh, so please apply. Uh, the more diverse the pool of applicants, the easier it is for us to really make a, a cohort that's representative of the movement. As this course happens, we're going to use this because it's a pilot year, it's a beta year. We're going to use this to develop a better, more well-rounded training in the future. Um, and so really, this is a test. And if you don't get it in this first round, we're going to try to create more training opportunities in the future uh, using this as a learning experience, just like um, other programs like the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program. So I'm gonna hand it over to Felix, who's gonna talk a little bit about like what happens after you finish the course, uh, what we hope will happen, and then we'll open the room up for questions. Right, thank you very much, Alex. So um, very insightful things you said, Alex. Um, so what happens when you finish this course? So when you successfully complete the course, we're hoping that um, so applicants will be given the chance to put in like a proposal at the end of the program. And so successful applicants would receive some um, funding through a grant pool um, that's um, affiliated to the program. And then they can receive funding to run um, their project um, during the Earth Day campaign. Um, participants will also be receiving certificates of recognition for, for their work and participation and efforts in the program. And so um, we definitely invite and encourage folks who have been trying or thinking of organizing within the climate space to take this leap and, and join this program and take advantage of that. Uh, we will also be connecting like um, folks who complete this course with international um, organizers um, from, from programs like the um, Wiki for Human Rights and then the African Knowledge Initiative. I know the African folks here are wondering like, what's the African Knowledge Initiative doing here? So if you uh, recollect that the, I think the second campaign, the cycle of um, campaigns that, that would be happening on the AKI project is um, the Earth Day campaign, the African Earth Day campaign. And we are linking this with this program. So folks who um, successfully complete this course will have a chance to participate um, in this program and also connect with the um, AKI project. And so, yeah, lots of opportunities for folks who would be um, joining this program. And like Alex said, we do have 75 applications, but we still want to widen that pool to create a diversity of of the first cohort. And so please feel free, you still have a chance, feel free to join us and we will be happy to have you in this cohort. Um, next slide. So yeah, apply, join us and let's, and let's, and let's make this call a very um, a good one, some one that we can learn from and improve um, future um, iterations of this um, organizer lab um, in, in years to come.